Hi! Today I'm going to be talking about reduction games, provability, and compactness. This is based on joint work with Demir Jaforov and Dennis Hirschfeld, which was originally supposed to be for the 2020 North American meeting of the ASL. And so the main result that I'm going to discuss today is a result on compactness of reduction games. And this is going to generalize the notion of reduction games that we've seen before and show that a compactness result holds there. And so, to start, we need some background on Pi 1 2 problems. So, in reverse mathematics, we often look at Pi 1 2 problems, which, as you'll recall, is a sentence for all x, theta of x implies there exists a y, psi of xy, which is a sentence of second order arithmetic where the formulas theta and psi are arithmetic. And we say a subset x of omega such that theta x of x holds is an instance of this problem and a solution is a subset y of omega such that psi of xy holds. And we typically use p and q to these problems. So second order arithmetic is a two-sorted first order language. It has two types of objects. We have number objects and set objects, but it's important to remember that even though it's second order arithmetic, it's still a first order language. This will actually come into play a lot in our main result. And so the usual base theory, RCA0, over which we work, corresponds roughly to computable mathematics. So you can think of the sets in RCA0 as just all the computable sets. We also have cause to consider another system of second order arithmetic called ACA0, which corresponds to the Turing jump existence problem. For all x, there exists a y such that y is the jump of x. And you can think of the sets in ACA0 as all the arithmetic sets. And so we have a theorem, which is from folklore, but it was proved by Wang. What this theorem says is that if we have a pi 1, 2 problem that is true in ACA0, then there is an n in omega such that for every x, we can find a solution y that is pi 0 n in x. And this n is independent of x, so it's the same n regardless of what instance of theta we have. And so this, our main result turns out to be a generalization of this theorem. As for models of second order arithmetic, they consist of a first order part, n, and a second order part, s, which is a subset of 2 to the n. And if n is standard, then we call m an omega model, and we identify it with s, since that's the only part that's different from the standard model. And so an omega model satisfies RCA0, if and only if it is a Turing ideal, whereas an omega model satisfies ACA0 if and only if it is a jump ideal, which means that it's closed under the Turing jump. We say that P is omega reducible to Q if every omega model of RCA0 plus Q is also a model of P. If RCA0 plus Q proves P, then we have that P is omega reducible to Q, but not necessarily vice versa. So we can see that this is a different notion because when we're considering RCA0 plus Q proves P, we will look at models other than omega models. We also have another notion of reducibility called computable reducibility. And the way this works is we say that P is computably reducible to Q if whenever we have a P instance X, we can compute from X an instance X hat of Q such that Whenever y hat is a solution to x hat, we can compute from y hat and x a solution y to the original instance x. We also have y rock reducibility that is just the uniform version of computable reducibility. So what this means is that instead of computing x hat from x and computing a solution to x from y hat, we use functionals so that it's the same process regardless of the instances. Now we'll look at some examples of pi 1, 2 problems. So we write x to the n for the collection of n element subsets of x, and we write the x in brackets as shown. We call a k coloring of x to the n just any map from c, a c that takes x to the n to, the natural, to a natural number k. And a coloring of x squared is called stable if the limit for y and x of c is x, y exists for all x and x. We say a subset h of x 
is homogeneous for C if there exists an I such that C of S equals I for all S and H to the N. And a subset L of X is limit homogeneous for C if there exists an I such that the limit for Y and L of C of X, Y equals I for all X and L. So these definitions give rise to some problems. So we have Ramsey's theorem for k colorings of n tuples, which says that every k coloring of n to the n has an infinite homogeneous set. We have Ramsey's theorem for n tuples, which we write as RTN to the less than infinity, or sometimes we drop the less than infinity and just write RTN, which says for all k, Ramsey's theorem for k colorings of n tuples holds. We have stable Ramsey's theorem for k colorings of pairs, which says that every stable k coloring of n squared has an infinite homogeneous set. And we have d2k, which says that every stable k coloring of n squared has an infinite limit homogeneous set. These principles have been extensively studied in computability theory and reverse math. We have a theorem by Jockish that says that for n greater than or equal to 2, every computable instance of RTN to the less than infinity has a pi zero 1 solution. There exists a computable instance of RTN2 with no sigma 0, 2 solution, and there exists a computable instance of RTN2 such that every solution computes 0 to the n minus 2. From this theorem, we get this corollary by Simpson that says that RTNK and RTN to the less than infinity are equivalent to ACA0 for n greater than or equal to 3. We get this using the two easy implications that RTN plus 1K implies RTNK, and that RTNK plus 1 implies RTNK. So we have, first of all, that from every computable instance of RTN to the less than infinity has a pi 0 n solution, we get that RTN to the less than infinity is provable in ACA0. And on the other hand, from the fact that there is a, exists a computable instance of RTN2 such that every solution computes 0 to the n minus 2, we get that RTN2 and therefore RTN plus 1, 2, RTN plus 2, 2, 2, and so on, and RTNK in general, all prove ACA0. And so these facts are easy to see in terms of, for instance, Turing reducibility, and then the proof of these, the proofs of these facts can easily be adapted to proofs over RCA0, and that's how we get the corollary. Cetapin, on the other hand, showed that ACA0 is not omega reducible to RT2 to the less than infinity. Now, we also know that RT2 to the less than infinity is omega reducible to RT2 too. However, Trolak, Jokish, and Slayman showed that RCA0 plus RT2 too does not prove RT2 to the less than infinity. Now, we also have that RCA0 proves RT1k for each k. So RT1 to the less than infinity is true in every omega model of RCA0. However, Hurst showed that RCA0 does not prove RT1 to the less than infinity. So this again shows the difference between being true in every omega model of RCA0 and being true in RCA0 in general. Now recall the theorem from folklore, which says that if ACA0 proves a pi 1, 2 principle, it proves that the solution can be found in a particular sigma 0 n for a particular n with respect to the original instance. And now we write RT to mean RTNK for all n and k, or equivalently RTN to the less than infinity for all n. And we get this corollary, which says that RT is omega reducible to ACA0, but ACA0 does not prove RT, because if it did, then the theorem from folklore would give us a contradiction to that theorem from Jockish. Equivalently, we have that RT is omega reducible to RT32, but RCA0 plus RT32 does not prove RT. So going back to the theorem from Jockish, we also have corollaries in terms of the other reducibilities that we introduced. We have in terms of computable reducibility and in terms of YROC reducibility, both RTNK is computably and YROC reducible to RTN plus 1K for all N greater than or equal to 1 as a corollary. And we also have a theorem proved by three different groups of researchers that RTNK is YROC reducible to RTN to the K plus 1 for all N greater than or equal to 1 and K greater than or equal to 2. It's important to note here that these reducibilities are strict. And so this is the kind of thing that YROC reducibility and these new tools are good for. They highlight these types of differences that aren't always captured by the tools we had previously used. 
Additionally, Pate showed that RTNK is computably reducible to RTNK plus 1 for all N and K greater than or equal to 2. So all these reducibilities use one instance of Q to solve an instance of P. And so a natural question to ask ourselves is, what would we get if we were able to use multiple instances of Q? And this is what the question that prompted the introduction of the idea of a reduction game by Hirschfeld and Jockish to allow for this possibility. Here we consider two player reduction games for principles P and Q, which has the following general structure. So player one plays an instance of P called X0. Player two tries to obtain a solution to X0 by asking player one to solve various Q instances. And if player two ever plays a solution to X0, they win and the game ends. But if the game never ends, then player one wins. And if any player is unable to make a move, then the opponent wins. So player two's strategy is to solve the original problem. Player one's strategy is either to make it so that player two can't move or that so that the game never ends. So the first reduction game we'll look at is the game G of Q implies P, which is defined as follows. On the first move, player 1 plays an instance X0 of P. Player 2 then either plays an X0 computable solution to X0 and wins, or they play an X0 computable instance Y1 of Q. For N greater than 1 on the nth move, player 1 plays a solution Xn minus 1 to the instance Yn minus 1 of Q. And player 2 either plays a solution to the original P instance X0 that is computable in all of player 1's previous moves, or they play a solution Yn to the instance of Q that player 1 played on the most recent turn, again, that is computable in all of player 1's previous moves. So for that game, it's like player 2's strategy is kind of, if they can't solve the instance X0 of P immediately, the goal is to keep playing instances of Q in such a way that player one solutions to these instances will give them more information. So we have the theorem by Hirschfeld and Jockish that if P is omega reducible to Q, then player two has a winning strategy for G of P, Q implies P, and otherwise player one has a winning strategy. So note that the, we have P is omega reducible to Q, and then it's G of Q implies P, because if you look at how the game works, we start with an instance of P, and then we use instances of Q to get a solution to this instance of P. So that's why the order switches. And so this is how we came across the notion of generalized Y-Rock reducibility, where we say that P is generalized Y-Rock reducible to Q, if player two has a computable winning strategy for the above game. So we have that RTN to the less than infinity is generalized Y-Rock reducible to RTN2, and RT is generalized Y-Rock reducible to RT3-2, because if you have RTN2 and you have RTNK for any K, you can just, so you can just keep grouping the colors together and as many times as you want until you have a homogeneous set that tells you the information you needed for a homogeneous set in the original instance. And so if player 2 has a winning strategy for G of Q implies P and at most N plus 1 many moves, then we write P is omega reducible to Q with a superscript N, and likewise for generalized Y-Rock reducibility. And so in particular, we have the following theorem from Hirschfeld and Jockish, which says that for N greater than or equal to 3, and j greater than or equal to 1, and m such that m lies between n plus the j minus first multiple of n minus 2 and n plus the jth multiple of n minus 2, then rtmk is generalized y-rock reducible and at most j plus 2 moves to rtnk, but rtmk is not omega reducible and at most j plus 1 moves to rtnk, so therefore rt is not omega reducible and at most j plus 1 moves to rt3 2 for all j although RT is, is omega reducible to RT32. So this kind of shows the limitations of this idea of being reducible in at most a certain number of moves that that does not hold in every situation that omega reducibility holds. And 
And so we have another theorem by Hirschfeld and Jockish that says that for j greater than or equal to 2 and k lying between j to the m and j to the m plus 1, that RT1k is generalized y rock reducible to RT1j in at most m plus 2 moves, but RT1k is not generalized y rock reducible to RT1j in at most m plus 1 moves. And so what this means is that there is a particular instance of RT1k and a particular instance of RT1j such that m plus 2 moves is, are necessary for player 2 to win the game. Um, it doesn't mean that it happens in every situation, but it means that there is at least one. And so from this, we conclude that RT1 to the less than infinity is not generalized y rock reducible and at most m plus 1 moves to RT1j for all m, although again, RT1 to the less than infinity is generalized y rock reducible to RT1j. And so Pate also showed that for n greater than or equal to 3, the RTNKs are omega reducible and at most 3 moves to RTNJ when j is less than k. But RTNK is not omega reducible in at most 2 moves to RTNJ. So again, this proves that there is a situation where 3 moves is necessary. However, for n equals 2, the least m such that RTNK is omega reducible to RTNJ and at most m plus 1 moves approaches infinity as k increases. And so we wanted to extend this idea of reduction games to look at not just standard models and not just omega models. So in order to do that, we need to extend the definition of pi 1 2 problems since in the definition we require that instances and solutions be subsets of omega. So we can extend this notion more generally as follows. We let m be an L1 structure, meaning a model of first order arithmetic with domain m. And for s a subset of the domain, we write ms for the L2 structure, i.e. model of second order arithmetic, with first order part m and second order part s. So for an L1 structure m, we say an m instance of p is just an x in the domain such that the model with first order part m and second order part just the set x proves theta of x, and a solution to x is a subset y of the domain such that the model with first order part m and second order part just the sets x and y models psi of xy. And so if n is an L1 structure, and x0 through xn are elements of n, then we let n of x0 through xn denote the model with first order part n and second order part s, where s consists of all the subsets of n that are delta 0, 1 definable from parameters in n together with the sets x0 through xn. And so from here, we arrive at the definition of the game G gamma of Q implies P, where gamma is a set of L2 formulas, and again, P and Q are pi 1, 2 problems. Hirschfeld and Jockish originally defined this game over RCA naught, but we wanted to apply it to more general sets of L2 formulas, gamma. So we define the gamma reduction G gamma of Q implies P as follows. On the first move, player 1 plays a countable L1 structure M, and an m instance x0 of p such that m of x0 is consistent with gamma. Player 2 then either plays a solution to x0 in m of x0 and wins, or plays an m instance y1 of q in m of x0. Then on subsequent moves, on the nth move, player 1 plays a solution xn minus 1 to the instance yn minus 1 of q such that m of x0 through xn minus 1 is consistent with gamma, and player 2 then plays either a solution to x0 and m of x0 through xn minus 1 and wins, or plays an m instance y1 of q and m of x0 through xn minus 1. So you can see how this game generalizes the game g of q implies p so that everything is played consistently with gamma. We also modified this idea of games over gamma. We ended up defining a modified gamma reduction game g hat of gamma of Q implies P. We'll see later why we need this modified game. The difference here is instead of playing something first order, we play second order structures. So on the first move, player one plays a model MS of gamma with M countable, and again, M instance X0 of P and S. Player two then either plays a solution to X0 and M of X0 and wins, or plays an M instance Y1 of Q and M of X0. And then on the nth move, 
we proceed as we did, but the solution that player 1 plays to yn minus 1 must be in S, and we again proceed as before for player 2's move. And so from the modified games, we obtain the result that if gamma is a consistent extension of delta 0, 1 comprehension by pi 1, 1 formulas, and again, P and Q are pi 1, 2 problems, if gamma proves Q implies P, then player 2 has a winning strategy for the gamma reduction game G gamma of Q implies P. And otherwise, we have that player 1 has a winning strategy for the modified game G hat of gamma plus Q of Q implies P. So this will be used to prove our main result, but for our main result, we need the mild extra assumption that gamma proves the existence of a universal sigma zero one formula. And so the main result is if gamma satisfies the aforementioned conditions and P and Q are pi one two problems, if gamma proves that Q implies P, then there is an N such that player two has a winning strategy for the modified game over gamma of Q implies P that ensures victory in at most N many moves. Otherwise, as in the previous proposition, player one has a winning strategy for the modified game over gamma plus Q of Q implies P. This theorem might not hold for the unmodified game. We're not actually sure. But note that this is the strongest possible result we can obtain because if you go back to the definitions, player one winning over gamma plus Q implies winning over gamma, and player two winning over gamma implies winning over gamma plus Q for either the regular game or the modified game. And so before we talk about how this theorem is proved, we can look at a corollary. If we let gamma be RCA naught plus together with all the pi 1 1 formulas that are true over omega, then if P is not omega reducible to Q in n plus 1 moves for any n, then gamma does not prove Q implies P. Or we can just look back at our results that relate winning G of Q implies P to being omega reducible, and we can see that by this theorem that if we had gamma implies Q implies P, then we would have to have a bound. And so as an example, if Q is RT22 and P is RT2 to the less than infinity, Pate showed that RT2 to the less than infinity is not omega reducible to RT2K or in at most n plus one moves for any n and k. So that means that gamma cannot show that RT22 implies RT2 to the less than infinity. This has been known for a long time for RCA naught, but it's interesting that this method gives an easy proof of this much stronger fact. For our main result, I'm not going to go through the whole proof here, but something that was a key ingredient is this essential lemma, which basically says that if we have a formula that shows that the yi are these phi sub ei, so the ei are the indices to the x0 plus x1 all the way through xi, which basically says player 2's moves are a computable, we have a computable strategy for player 2's moves. So we have this formula theta of n, which basically says player 2 plays these computable moves and wins the game. And so this lemma says that if gamma proves Q implies P, then there is an N, a particular N, such that player 2 wins the game and N moves. And the way that this theorem is proved is simply by compactness, because if you'll recall from the beginning, we are working in second order arithmetic, which is a first order language, and so you can apply a compactness result here. You can show that any finitely many of these sentences theta n are satisfied, and then therefore we get this main result. After we played around with these ideas of extending reduction games, we also thought about extending generalized Y-Rock reducibility. And so we say that P is generalized Y-Rock reducible to Q over gamma if player 2 has a computable, in this case meaning delta 0, 1, winning strategy for G to the gamma of Q implies P. We can also define computable reducibility over gamma and Y-Rock reducibility over gamma in a similar way. And we have the theorem that is P is generalized Y-Rock reducible to Q over gamma, then there is an N in omega such that player 2 has a winning strategy for G to the gamma of Q implies P that ensures victory in at most N many moves. 
So to put this all in context, I'll give an example. And the example I'm going to talk about here is the example of limit homogeneous sets. Now, recall that I said that a coloring of x squared is stable if the limit for y and x of the color of xy exists for all x and x. And a subset L of x is limit homogeneous for a coloring C from x squared to k if there exists an i such that the limit for y and L of the color of xy is i for all x and L. So we have the principles, stable Ramsey's theorem for k colorings of pairs, which says that every stable k coloring of n squared has an infinite homogeneous set, and D2k, which says that every stable k coloring of n squared has an infinite limit homogeneous set. Now, Cholak, Jokush, and Slayman showed that SRT22 is computably equivalent to D22, and Chong, Lemp, and Yang showed that SRT22 and D22 are equivalent over RCA0. However, Jaforov showed that SRT22 is not YROC reducible to D22, and Hirschfeld and Jokush showed that SRT22 is generalized YROC reducible and at most three moves to D22. So we now introduce the principle LH, which is that for every two coloring of N squared, every infinite limit homogeneous set has an infinite homogeneous subset. Note that an instance of LH we are going to specify includes the color I to which the set is limit homogeneous. And so in reverse math, we often consider the sigma zero two bounding principle B sigma zero two. And over RCA naught, we consider this equivalent principle to be sigma zero two called bound star, which we define by bound star is the principle that for a simultaneous enumeration of bounded sets, there exists a common bound for these sets. Now, we showed that over RCA naught, LH is equivalent to bound star. However, LH is trivial with respect to YROC reducibility, by which I mean that it's LH YROC reduces to the identity problem. And this remains the case over RCA0 plus B sigma 0, 2. However, we have that LH is not generalized YROC reducible over RCA0 to bound star. What this means is that bound star has a purely proof theoretic purpose in proving LH. And now recall that SRT22 is generalized YROC reducible to D22. However, the following question remains open. Is SRT22 generalized YROC reducible over RCA0 to D22. So even though the generalized YROC reducibility holds in general, it is not obvious to us how to transform this into a proof over RCA0. In our work, we also looked at other versions of B sigma zero two besides bound star and how they fit into this structure we've made of YROC reducibility and generalized YROC reducibility over principles such as RCA0. I've also been really looking at how YROC reducibility over RCA0 works and looking at principles that hold in regular YROC reducibility and seeing how things change when we take YROC reducibility over RCA0 or even just some more general set of formulas gamma.